They are the largest creatures to have ever lived on our planet. Longer than a basketball court. And heavier than over 30 T-Rex. The Blue Whale. For over a million years, they have sung to one another across entire ocean basins. Low, resonant notes that can travel for hundreds or even thousands of miles. But now, headlines are sounding the alarm. Reports claim that blue whales are going silent. Is this a sign that the ocean's largest sentinels are disappearing? That their time has finally run out? Or is there more to the story than the headlines would have us believe? This story begins in Monterey Bay, California, where a deep sea hydrophone anchored half a mile beneath the ocean's surface has been listening for years. Between 2015 and 2021, scientists noticed a sharp decline in blue whale songs. This recently published data has led to grave proclamations in the media about the fate of not only blue whales, but our oceans as a whole. Now I'm not here to diminish this study, but it is based on recordings from a single location in one small corner of the ocean. And it's worth remembering, the Pacific is vast, and our understanding of the blue whale spans just two generations since the end of commercial whaling. During this study period, a marine heat wave had a profound impact on the North Pacific Ocean. Nutrient-providing currents of cold water weakened, and many top predators like whales had to adjust. Interestingly, while the study noted a decrease in blue whale numbers, humpback whale numbers around Monterey Bay steadily increased. They themselves are a massive conservation success story along the West Coast, so not everything is all doom and gloom. A similar pattern emerged in the Santa Barbara Channel. Once a reliable summer stronghold for blue whales, it has since become one of the best places of anywhere on the west coast to see humpbacks. Blue whales have become much less frequent, with many years of hardly any sightings at all. Moving further south, we get to my home, San Diego, California. And this is where things get pretty interesting. I've been whale watching here almost daily since 2018, and what I've seen tells a different story than what we're reading in the headlines. We're gonna quickly run through the last eight years. So in 2018, blue whale sightings in San Diego were a daily occurrence May through August. And that includes some pretty notable days where over 30 blue whales were in our coastal San Diego area. That summer, water temperatures in the area hit record highs, yet the whales were still managing to find food. 2019 began in a pretty similar fashion, with the majority of the whales departing for different feeding grounds near the middle of July. Sightings got off to a bit of a delayed start in 2020, and the number of whales dipped quite a bit from the previous two years. We'd see one to two whales every other day or so, but that's only part of the story. Further offshore, the number of blue whales exploded. We were lucky to have such calm seas this summer as we were sometimes traveling as much as 80 miles offshore. Nearly every day we went out there, the blue whales were abundant into early September. 2021 saw a slight uptick in the coastal sightings, 
and once again had numerous blue giants 30 to 80 miles offshore throughout the summer. 2022 and 2023 saw a dramatic return by the whales to the near coastal San Diego waters. Sightings were numerous, consistent, and at times, completely breathtaking. Last year, 2024, was maybe one of the greatest summers ever for blue whales in San Diego. From May through early August, there was almost always at least 20 or more blue whales scattered throughout San Diego waters, including numerous displays of the whales surface lunge feeding on krill, a behavior that's rarely filmed. While there wasn't a hydrophone in San Diego that was utilized for this study, we did bring a hydrophone of our own so we could listen in to the haunting calls of the largest animal to ever live. Now let's get to this year, 2025, which has definitely been the one true down summer for blue whales since I've lived in San Diego. Since May, we've observed blue whales on 26 different days this summer, but very little evidence of successful foraging was observed, and if there's not enough food, the whales are gonna go elsewhere. So between the study in Monterey Bay and my own observations here in San Diego, I have a few takeaways. For one, there does seem to be a correlation between an increase in humpback whales with a decrease in blue whales in the same locations. Perhaps the blues prefer to eat in places with less competition? Or maybe the humpbacks with their more diverse diet are better suited to adjust to changes in ocean productivity. And it's true humpbacks seem to prefer eating fish in California waters, but they do feed on krill as well. In 2023, Monterey Bay had an explosion of krill in the late spring and early summer. These were some of the largest shoals of krill I have ever seen on the surface, some of which were almost a mile wide. There was over 50 humpbacks in the bay, gorging themselves on krill, but surprisingly there was hardly any blue whale seen in Monterey Bay at all that summer. Yet in San Diego, the blue whales were numerous. Over the last eight years, there's no doubt in my mind that San Diego has been the most reliable place to see blue whales, especially in the early summer. Had this study taken place here, it might have painted a picture of a thriving population, but I'm not so sure that would be true either. Even in years of consistent encounters here in San Diego, I've noticed a troubling pattern. Many blue whales appear to be thin. They may find food while they're here, but they only remain in San Diego waters for a few short months. If the krill is scarce elsewhere along their migration, they will struggle. We know that a warming ocean disrupts krill production, and it also fuels these stronger, frequent toxic algae blooms. This past spring, San Diego experienced one of those really severe algae blooms, and it could be possible that that had an impact on why there was less krill this year. The truth is, the ocean still holds far more questions than answers. So are blue whales truly falling silent? 
In some corners of the ocean? Yes. At least for a time. But the reality is a far more intricate picture. But how that story is told can shape how the world responds. When everything you see in the media is a crisis, the very idea of a crisis begins to fade. Alarm can stir the crowd for a moment, but when pulled too often, it simply dulls the senses, until even the truest warnings are lost to the noise. The reality is all wildlife is in crisis. The question is, how do we make the rest of humanity hear their story?